All right, you guys, you know what time it is? You guessed it. It's time to make some gumbo. And today, we're making the gumbo with my new seasoning. We got to try it out. So, I'd like to know what y'all think about this. Now, you know how we got to start out. We got to start out with our oil and our flour to make our roux. So, the best oil I've ever used, believe it or not, and I know it's not good for you, is canola oil. So, we're going to go in with three-fourths of a cup of canola oil and about a little over three-fourths of a cup of all-purpose flour. So now the next step is put it on your burner, but put it on a low heat, nothing more than that. And now it's time for the fun part, but also the most important part. And that's when you're making your roux, you gotta keep stirring it on that low heat. Never go above the low heat and just keep stirring it until it gets that color that you like. So we're stirring the roux. I'm ready to cook my andouille. I'm gonna cook my chicken too, but I need a friend to come in and help me keep this stirring. I can help you. All right, well, come on in here, grab the wooden spoon and just keep stirring like you're going around on a racetrack. All right, so I'm using some of this pre-packaged andouille. I know what y'all are gonna say. That's all right, guess what? I live in Kentucky. I don't have andouille farms around here, okay? Diagonally, nice long pieces. So they look like that. Now in your cast iron pan, we're gonna cook up our andouille. While that's cooking, Josh is still stirring, I'm gonna cut up my chicken. Take them, set them down sideways, and just cut across. I really didn't know you had to stir for this long. Well, you know what the funny thing is? You still got about another 30 minutes to go, but <laughs> you're not even close. So now, we're just gonna take our andouille, and set it to the side, but we're gonna keep all that grease in the pan. Drop your chicken in, and we gotta season that bird up. So you know, like I said, we're going in with the seasoning. That's the blue top. After your thighs are cooked for about 10 minutes, you're gonna get some nice color on it. Pour it right over the andouille. Now, what are you gonna do with all that right there? I'll show you what to do. It's your chicken stock. We're gonna deglaze the pan. Scrape those little flakes of yum yums off the bottom of the pan. We're just gonna pour that in. All right, now we can just let this sit to the side. And now, look, we're about 25, 30 minutes in. We're starting to change color. He's been stirring the whole time, but now I gotta make the rice. So he's gonna keep doing that while we're getting our gumbo to where we want our roux, and I'm gonna make the rice. So it's been an hour. Look at that roux. It's nice and dark chocolatey. We're gonna go for maybe 10 more minutes. I know what you're thinking. It's starting to look like motor oil, but that's where we're taking it. I want y'all to notice one thing too. Look at this spoon real quick. Look at this spatula. That was brand new right before we started this video. And uh, yeah, now it's burnt. Imagine if you used a plastic spatula like I did one time. All right, y'all, it's been an hour and 10 minutes exactly. Look at the roux. It's perfect. It looks exactly like we want it to look like. So now we're gonna go on and add in our Holy Trinity. That's our celery, green pepper, and onion. Remember y'all, the roux is a hot canola oil with flour, and we're just stirring in these peppers and celery and onion and let that cook down for just a minute. We can actually turn it up now. Notice there's no smoke coming out of this. We're just letting that slow cook in our roux, the peppers, onions, and celery. All right, now it's time to add our chicken stock and basically kind of turn this into our gravy. You can see how it's separating. It'll all become a gravy here in just a minute. We can also go on and add back in our chicken and our sausage and that juice. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add a couple more cups of chicken stock. We've already added four, so now we're gonna call it six. All right, now this is the part where me and Louisiana get into a little bit of an argument because I like to use frozen okra. You know why? Because it's not slimy. We don't have fresh okra right now, so this is the best option. So I'm gonna add in our frozen okra. Now it's time to spice this up. Usually you see me use the spicy Danos. That's phenomenal in gumbo. Today, we're trying the seasoning. That's right, that's the blue top, seasoning. So let's add a bunch of that in there. Probably gonna go at least a fourth of a bottle. Whoa, <laughs> that seasoning's doing something right, but I think it still needs a little more. Remember y'all, it says don't be salty because just like our other products, it's not packed full of salt. It's real ingredients. So we're adding more and we're getting the flavor actually cooked into the food, not just a bunch of salt. All right, so now we got our gumbo exactly where we want it. We're not done yet. It's time for me to throw you a little curveball. So what I'm gonna do is take one pound of some frozen white shrimp. We're gonna throw those in there. 
Let them start cooking. Then right here, we got some regular old cod. So I'm gonna cut this up into some nice chunks. All right, now we add in those beautiful pieces of cod. Give it a stir, and this won't take long. Just kind of fold everything in together. And basically, as soon as your frozen shrimps are done, your cod will be done too. You don't want to overcook it. All right, see that? See how the shrimps are starting to curl up now? You can tell the cod is totally cooked. So now, it's time to plate it on up and get a bite. But one more thing, maybe. Hey, Josh, you see a can of corn in there? <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, Josh, this is how you do it. Get your little bowl of rice. You want to pack it in nice and thick. It's already packed in there for you. And then you just turn your bowl upside down like that. Bam. There's your little cup of rice. Look at that. Go in right on the side. You want to make sure you get a nice gravy scoop in there because you want to have enough gravy. Use a spork if you got it. If not, go get one. All right, give it a try. Oh, wow. That is Dan O'Mite. Now you're speaking my Dan language. All right, you guys. It's been fun. Make sure you hit that like button. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think about this gumbo. And we'll see you next time. Keep sprinkling, my friends. Yum, yum, get you some. I'll let him say it. Yum, yum, get you some.